This module is all about the finishing touches on a website. So whether you've made it for yourself or you're making it for a different client, you need to put the finishing touches on a website. And I just wanted to go over some of the stuff that was kind of left out in the other modules. So let's kick things off with adding the details to your page. So here I have a website that we've already built. It's got some animations. It's got some nice stuff going on. And what I want to do is click on the desktop, right? And if I go up here to settings, I can click in and I get into this different interface. Okay. So it's giving me page settings for home and portfolio, which are the two pages that I have. And it's just filled with default values. So I'm going to start at the top with general. And if I click in here, what I can do is I can change the title of my site. And you might be thinking like, what even is that? Does that even matter? So if I, direct your attention to up here at the top of the, the screen, you can see that I've got three tabs open. How do I know what is in those tabs? Okay, I know because it has a title. Okay, so typically you'll get a logo, which is called a favicon, and you'll also get the title that we type in here. So I'm gonna write in here because this is my portfolio site. I'm just gonna call it my portfolio, okay? And in here, we want to add a description. So when you search something on Google, you're going to come across big listings, okay? And in those listings, there's usually a description and it looks something like this. So we can see the preview here. So I've got my default domain that Framer has generated for me. And then I've got the site title, which is my portfolio. I would use like your name or your business or whatever the business of the client is for this. Then you want to put in a useful description. Now, I would use something probably that defines your niche. So if my niche is I want to work with plumbers in Dublin, I will say something like uh, best web design uh, agency for plumbers in Dublin. OK, obviously, I'd spend a bit more time with the capital letters and all that kind of thing. And what I would even do is take that phrase and go into ChatGPT and just search, hey, ChatGPT, this is my business niche. This is what I wanted to roughly say. It's for my site description. Generate something, okay? It will give you something that's somewhat optimized for SEO. And the reason I care about SEO, it's search engine optimization. So if somebody searches best web design agency for plumbers in Dublin, then my website is going to come up as the top search. So Putting this stuff here in the details of your website is really, really important. So we can scroll down here. Accessibility is a really important thing for Google because if your website is not really good for people who are struggling with uh, their vision or their hearing, or they've got other issues where they react to things like animations, Google will not promote your website, even if somebody searches exactly what it is. So I like to always switch this thing on because if somebody has gone through the trouble of adjusting their browser to turn off animations wherever possible, we don't want to opt out of that. We want to make our website as accessible for everybody as much as possible. Because number one, it's just being nice and being a good person. And number two, it actually helps us rank in Google search a little bit easier. Then we come down here. So Favicon, as I said, this is a 32 by 32 pixel uh, logo. So I always suggest use a website like Canva and you can just create your favicon at that size. So just take a screenshot of your logo or your brand and then just export it in 32 by 32. Like it's super, super tiny, but you can upload it here and then that's going to appear right there beside the title in the uh, tabs of your of whatever browser you're using. So you want to upload that stuff. Social image, this is what will come up when somebody shares your website. So if somebody sends a WhatsApp link to your website, it'll usually have a preview image. And again, I would just use something like Canva to design something nice. It can be your logo or it can be uh, something that you want people to care about. So uh, think of it like a YouTube thumbnail, essentially. Password protection, we're not going to worry too much about this, but Google Analytics. Now, I, I know I mentioned a lot of SEO, search engine optimization is a service that people will pay for. And when you're selling websites, you want to find as many different things that you can add value to your proposition. 
that's going to make it easier to sell a service to a client. And if you can say, not only will I build your website, not only will I maintain it, not only will I make sure that everything is working pop properly, but I'm also going to rank your website number one for X, Y, Z keywords using SEO. So you can use a website called Google Optimize. Now this is completely free to set up. You just search Google Optimize. I suggest following some kind of a tutorial to just uh, navigate your way around it. But essentially, Google is going to give you a snippet, like a little number, an ID, and you can come back to Framer and just paste it in here. It's called your Google Analytics measurement ID. And that means Google is going to start helping you track your website. Why does this matter? Well, because if you sell a website to a client and then you're charging them 50 euros per month for maintenance and SEO, you can report back to them and be like, hey, your website is getting people to stay on it for more and more time because we've made these adjustments for you or because we've optimized it in this way. So it just really gives you data to back up what you're saying and allow you to continue to charge for your service. So really important one. Custom code, knock yourself out, but I wouldn't spend too much time on this unless you know what you're doing. Domains, uh, let me just save this. Sorry, save this. Uh, when we go to domains, uh, again, you can update your domains. Um, if you want to make your personal website, I suggest not using a default Framer domain. So where it says .framer.app, typically you wanna actually go to a website called Namecheap and you can buy a domain there. So something simple like your full name is quite useful. If you have a name that is difficult to pronounce or spell, or something else, maybe it's just taken, you might have to come up with a brand name or something a little bit shorter for people to remember. Um, I generally like to stick with the .com whenever possible, but my personal website is .dev because I'm a developer. So you can consider those different, um, those different web extensions for your domain, but I do suggest that you buy a domain. And it's very easy to set it up here. In uh, Framer, you can update your domain here and it'll be you know danny.dev uh, portfolio or whatever and people will go to that website and then they will see your website so really really easy really easy to set up redirects not super important don't you don't need to worry about that unless you do in which case you'll have to go through the documentation staging and versioning you probably don't need to worry about this uh, analytics these are default uh, presented to you by framer which is excellent so you don't necessarily need google um, analytics but usually a client would like to have Google Analytics as well and then your plan is just how much you plan on uh, paying for your framer website so you can manage everything about your website right here and again each page you might want to update this to match your portfolio website so this site name so just change that on every page add a description for what that page is again that helps people find that page of your website more easily so what about all of this? What's the big deal? So I can hit publish here now and now my website is live. But I wanna go back and adjust some other little details. So a huge part of a website doing well or being better than what they, the other people had previously is testing for things like SEO. So there's a website, a web extension for Chrome called Lighthouse. I suggest that you add that to your Chrome and then run a report on their original website for the client. And then what you wanna do is when you've built their new website like we have here, go through and you wanna rename each section. If you remember the HTML, you wanna remember these sections. So gonna go into the navigation and I can scroll all the way down to the bottom here and there's an accessibility thing. Now accessibility, just means for people who have screen readers that it'll say this is the navigation bar. Uh, your ARIA label and your tag will do that. It's really good to add these to your website because it boosts the website in SEO, so in search rankings. And it's so easy to just go through and change that to navigation. Done. Now it's more accessible and it's a better SEO website. Okay, you can add ARIA labels as well, which is just a quick definition for what that is. So I'm going to say uh, navigation bar okay and now suddenly this website went from being less accessible to more accessible 
And you can, again, reiterate this when you're making your sale, when you're justifying your prices to the clients. This one here, again, we don't want to call it just a div. We want to call it a section. Okay, you want to go down, and repeat that throughout the whole website. You also might want to go here and change it to a footer like I've done here. And when we go to publish the website, so update, wait for it to update, now I'm going to go there. This is our website that we just made. So let's see how it does with accessibility. So don't get worried about this. Come over here, I'm going to go to Lighthouse. I'm going to go for Analyze Page Load and see what we get. Okay, it's really good to add statistics to your business as much as possible because it helps you justify a higher price. And that's what I want for you. I want you to be able to charge more for the work that you've done. And here we go, a total score of 92. If you go to any WordPress website, or, or I guarantee you most of the local websites in your town, they are not going to be getting anything close to this score because that is how good Framer is. And that is what makes it easier for you to sell these websites. So use Lighthouse Reports to your advantage. Add SEO as one of the things that you're going to add value to their website and to their business. And you can use these things to get way more out of one client. You can get recurring revenue if you figure out uh, the best business model for what you're trying to do. So these are just the details. I really wanted to go over it. I know this seemed like a lot to take in, but break it down. You want to add tags to your website. You want to uh, advertise your SEO skills and you want to use Lighthouse Reporting and Google Optimize to give statistics and data to your business. So have a poke around your website and try and add the HTML tags, ARIA labels, etc. and practice selling websites.